Psalms 119, verses 137 to 144. Zadi, zeal of the, of the word. Zeal is you want it. You're going for it. Your aim. It's in your sights. Righteous art thou, O Lord, and upright are thy judgments. God is holy. As we're going to 137 verses of this chapter all about the word, and we've gone from Genesis 1 all the way to here, we're going to realize that everything of God is righteousness. Because you're going to deal with people who are going to come up to you, and they're going to blame God for deaths. They're going to blame God for famines and disasters and all that. And you got to realize the only answer, even though they don't believe God and don't know his words, is God is righteous. God was right. And we know you can't blame just God. You've got to blame Satan, but Satan gets his permission from God. And if it's an act of judgment, God is upright. Why did all those people die? The wages of sin is death. That's why. And you're really not going to get that into someone who's not saved because they don't have the spirit of God. They can't discern the things that are spiritual. For they got the spirit of man. Thy testimonies, God's testimonies that thou hast commanded are righteous and very faithful. God commands us right things and faithful things. He never commands us to do wrong. He never commands us to ha for us to have harm done to ourselves. But you wouldn't think that for some religions. You read the Old Testament, there were things, there were people giving their children, their babies, into the flames of fire. That's not God. The righteous God says, Thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt honor thy mother and father, thou shalt not covet. Things that are helpful to you and others. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. You love the brethren. Those are righteous and faithful things to do. And it's found in God's true word, and that is what we're to do. My zeal has consumed me, because my enemies have forgotten thy words. An enemy of God is one that forget the words of his. So anybody who doesn't want to have any regard to the word saved or lost, is an enemy to someone who is of God, who has a zeal. How's that one? There are Christians you know that don't have anything to do with the Word of God, and they are your enemy. That's how high God esteems the Word of God. Anybody who puts the TV, puts novels or other books ahead of the Word of God, who don't honor, who don't love, who don't read, is counted as an enemy. They've forgotten thy words. So that means they have to know the word. How can you forget something that you don't know? You couldn't tell me, uh, oh, I forgot how to launch a missile. I don't know how to launch a missile. So there's nothing there to forget. So that's an interesting thing that it's already known. Thy word. God's word. Which word is it today There's of the modern Bibles out there? Which one is God's word? They all can't be God's word because they're all not the same. Imagine if people drove cars like the, like the Bibles out there. 
Oh, I don't like the clutch, so I'm not going to use it. I don't like the, the little lights that tell, that give me warning on the dashboard, so I'm not going to follow that. You're going to have a mess. Thy word is very pure, and pure is genuine, real, unmixed. God used man to write the Bible, true. The inspiration. Pure is something that man hasn't touched. So there goes your modern Bible, because modern Bibles man has messed with. All right. David wrote Psalms. Solomon wrote Proverbs. Moses wrote the five books that are found in the beginning of your Bible. But those words are pure. They are of God. They got in a per permission and inspiration by God what to write. And that establishes difference from any of these religious teachings and books that are found out there all over the world. God is not in them and those things are not pure. Therefore thy servant loveth it. There are people who love books or whatever out there that proclaim by their religion. And they're not pure. Only the word proclaims to be pure. And where is that fine land, line that man has not touched it yet, but man has wrote it? I don't know. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John did not write a diary. They later on, after the death and burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ, sat down and write. By what the Holy Spirit told them to write. Now, if somebody comes up today and finds his lost book of, of you know, of Jesus' life and all that, and it doesn't match the, the, the Gospels, well, that's a man writing. And there have been books out there, you know, written in the eyes of Judas and written all other things. And that's not pure. That's been adulterated. That's been put in by sin. I am small. I am, wait a minute. I am small. Jews are small. And despise. What is man compared to the entire pop? Listen, they didn't even know about the Americas in the times that this psalm was written. They had no idea that was there was life on the other side of the world. They knew from Spain or the Atlantic Ocean all the way to the Pacific Ocean. That would be Europe and Asia. Just the population of that area. I am so small and despised. And for doing what God wants you to do and living right, you will be despised. People who follow Muslim religion are not despised. People who follow the Roman Catholic Church are not despised. People who follow the Asian religions are not despised. Why is it that the Christian, the one that follows the God of the, of the Holy Bible, why are they the ones despised? Listen, Sodomites are not despised today. Yet do not I forget thy precepts. No matter what other people think of me, I'm not giving up. I'm not quitting. 
Thy God's righteousness is an everlasting righteousness. And thy law is the truth. Plain and simple. The law. Thy sanctify them through thy word. Thy word is true. John seventeen seventeen. Trouble and anguish have taken hold on me. Oh, so you mean being of God, you're going to have troubles and problems? And yes. And you're going to probably have more. For all they that live godly shall suffer persecution. Yet thy commandments are my delights. Even in troubles and problems in your life, the word of God, the commandments of God, you are still to love others more than you love yourself. How do you get over your problems and your troubles and your anguish? Love others. Get your eyes off yourself. Get your eyes on God. The righteous of thy testimony, the righteousness of thy testimonies is everlasting. Well, it said in verse 40, 142, thy righteousness is everlasting. The righteousness of thy testimony is, right, is everlasting. Everything that God has done. When we get the glory, we're not going to hear nothing about evolution. We're going to worship the Creator with a capital C. And we are his creation that he made man. He didn't make tadpoles and, and let him grow up to be other things. That's a testimony of God that God created everything. Give me understanding. Now, knowledge is what you know. Wisdom is how to apply what you know. And in the Bible, understanding is is what you know and, and how you know in the relationship that you can do for God. And I shall live. Obeying the word of God will give you life. If you sin, the wages of sin is death. Remove sin, and you'll live forever. And that's exactly what God has to do to these bodies. When he gives us a new body, and he judges us for what we've done on this earth. And that stuff done not for him will burn up, and that stuff that will be done for him will receive crowns, and then we get the new body, and we get no more pain, no more sorrow, no more tears in eternity. Then we're going to live forever. Continue in your sin. Disobey God. And you'll be cast out into the lake of fire. What kind of life is that? God calls it perishing. But you don't go anywhere. You're not annihilated. You're living, but that's not a life to God. And you read all the places where in the New Testament you talk about eternal life and you're witnessing to somebody. That eternal life is with God. It is never, never spoken of lake of fire. It's always spoken of perishing, death, the second death. God doesn't want you to go there. God does not want you to go to hell so much that Jesus Christ, who is God, came on this planet, lived, suffered, and died, and was buried and rose again that we might have eternal life and have life and more abundantly. Your zeal is to the everlastingness and righteousness of God. 
The Bible says we're to be Christ-like. And Christ is right. Christ is righteous. Christ is holy. Oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art. That God, his son, not sparing, sent him to die, I scarce can take it in. That on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. When Christ shall come with shout of acclamation, and take me home, what joy shall fill my heart, then I shall bow.